wetland is not the same everywhere you go. From mangrove swamps in Florida to prairie potholes in the Midwest, wetlands occur all over the country and all over the world. Wetland is an umbrella term that encompasses many different types of habitat. They share common characteristics such as soil, hydrology, and vegetation, but they vary widely in the details of those features. South Carolina's coast is home to several distinct types of wetland. It's important to be familiar with the diversity of wetlands found locally so that you can better recognize them and distinguish between the different services they provide. Marsh, swamp, Pocosin, Carolina Bay, riparian forest, bottomland hardwood forest, pine flats. There are many different names for wetland habitats. These names may or may not match up with formal definitions and classification systems, but it's helpful to know how they are generally used. In this video, we'll apply our knowledge of wetland characteristics in the context of several of the most common wetland habitats found in coastal South Carolina. We'll start with one of the most iconic South Carolina wetlands, the salt marsh. Marshes are characterized by herbaceous emergent vegetation, so the main types of plants you'll see here are grasses. Marshes can be fresh or salt water and be tidal or non-tidal. Salt marshes occur in the intertidal zone. Plants experience daily changes in inundation and salinity, and they have specialized adaptations for coping with both. Salt marshes often form in estuarine systems where rivers meet the sea and on the back sides of barrier islands. Salt marshes are distributed widely across the South Carolina coast. Salt marshes are highly productive ecosystems. They are home to a huge quantity and diversity of life. They are connected to marine environments, but provide sheltered habitat that acts like a nursery for many creatures, including commercially important species. Salt marshes also provide important services, such as buffering wave energy from storm surge. Another type of wetland is freshwater emergent marsh. The marshes seen here are former rice fields created by slave labor and are distributed along coastal rivers throughout South Carolina. These marshes are tidal but with less variation in water level and more freshwater input from rivers. Like salt marshes, they're characterized by herbaceous emergent vegetation, but different species are present. This type of wetland has experienced alterations to its natural hydrology through the creation of ditches and impoundments, but it still supports hydrophytic vegetation. These wetlands can provide ample room for water storage during river flooding and also provide valuable habitat for ducks and other waterfowl. Swamps are characterized by trees. The Blackwater rivers of coastal South Carolina are bordered by Cypress Tupelo Swamp. Wetland plants, such as cypress and tupelo trees, have adaptations that are uniquely suited to wetland environments. Some are easy to spot, such as buttressed roots and cypress knees. Some, however, are cellular adaptations that allow the plant to deal with saturated and anaerobic soil. These freshwater wetlands are semi-permanently flooded and still experience tidal influence depending on how far upriver they are. Unlike a salt marsh where water levels vary with daily tides, some wetlands have water that changes seasonally or annually. That's why the presence of water on any given day is not a reliable indicator of a wetland habitat. Bottomland hardwood forest is dominated by trees and might not appear to be a wetland at first glance. Surface water may only be present during certain times of year. Similarly, the water table level can vary over time as well. When water is present, it may come from elevated river levels or from rainfall. These habitats occur upland of riverine systems throughout the coastal plain. Another distinctive wetland is a Carolina Bay. These geographic landforms are elliptical depressions with a distinct orientation and a sand border. They only occur throughout the Atlantic seaboard and are especially common in the Carolinas. While their formation is not fully understood, wind and wave energy likely played a role in creating these unique features of our landscape. 
Carolina bays are not named after ocean bays, but rather for bay trees, which are common in these habitats. Carolina bays vary in their features and can be open water, swamps, or dense understories of scrubby vegetation. This type of habitat may be described as a Pocosin or a scrub shrub wetland. Carolina bays are typically isolated from contiguous water bodies. They're seasonally saturated almost always from precipitation. The lack of connectivity to waterways means that certain organisms, such as predatory fish, are not present. This is a critical factor for wildlife like amphibians, frogs, salamanders, that lay their eggs in isolated temporary water bodies. All these wetlands provide benefits for wildlife habitat, nutrient cycling, water quality improvements, groundwater recharge, flood storage, and much more. The relative contributions of different habitat types is more complex than we can cover here. For now, what is important to recognize is that while these wetlands have unifying features, they are not interchangeable in terms of the desired benefits they provide. If you're interested in providing habitat for ducks versus salamanders, not all types of wetlands are created equal. The same is true if you're interested in flood storage versus water quality improvements. The diversity of wetland types on the South Carolina coast provides a diversity of benefits.